How's it going, everybody? This is Pastor Kyle. Uh, the day after Easter, man, praise God. Praise God for Easter service. I believe there are many good things that happen in churches um, all around America and throughout the world and even outside of outside of the church. Praise God. So I know at Vision Church, we had five people give their life to the Lord, and uh, we're really excited about that. Amen. And, you know, here at Vision Church, we're not... Um, we're not just interested in uh, numbers and, and statistics. We're interested in making disciples. Amen. And uh, I was talking to our prayer minister, uh, Sandra, the other day, and, and was just sharing, you know, just just talking about discipleship, and and uh, it's just really exciting, just to know that you know God is calling us to to multiply ourselves and to make disciples. And um, you know, many times I was thinking about this. Many times in the body of Christ, we think that. We're making a, a big a, a big effect in, in God's kingdom when we're out there, you know, evangelizing, hitting the streets, um, preaching, uh, really, you know, really good messages, you know, whatever the case may be, just typical, typical things like that, spiritual things that we do. And we think, man, this is how we're changing the world. But I honestly believe that the way that we change the world is by every Christian just simply living for God, loving God wholeheartedly, and um, being a disciple. You know, every Christian going to God's Word and just allowing God's Spirit to uh, train and teach us, right? I think that's really how we change the world is by being disciples, you know? And the thing about being a disciple is disciples make disciples. You know, disciples are not just interested in learning the truth for themselves. They're interested in spreading it and walking alongside someone in life and helping them along the way. And so that's that's our mindset at Vision Church. That's our heart at Vision Church is, is not to just be about numbers and converts, but uh, to make disciples because we don't, we're not in the business of, you know, patting ourselves on the back like, oh, people got saved, you know, we did a great job. That's not what we're about. We're about actually helping people, right? We're not concerned about the statistics. We're concerned about helping people. And I think that's how really all believers should be. Every church should be. And I'm sure there are many churches like that, really good churches out there who are, who are doing that. And that's what we should be about. But I think that we, may, that we <clears throat> affect more change in the world by, um, again, just, just living for Jesus. I mean... Him making him our Lord, him him being our everything, and um, just abiding in His Word. You know, I think that when we do that, I mean, we're we're being an example, we're being a light to people, and uh, that's what it's all about. Praise God. So, anyways, with that being said, um, I hope that you guys had a good Easter. Praise God, and um, you know, don't let that. Don't let that uh, experience that you had yesterday um, go away. You know, we're supposed to be excited about the Lord every day, not just on Easter, not just on Christmas Day. We're supposed to be excited about the Lord and serving Him and, and living for Him every day. And so, anyways, let me jump into today's message. Um, and today's message is really about, you know, where our life is headed. And so, let me just jump into this here so I don't take too much time. In Proverbs 4... And uh, verse 23, let me actually start in verse 20. So Proverbs 4.20, he says, My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. And here in verse 23, it says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Our heart determines the course of our life. And the way that, the way that I look at that is, <clears throat> so this message today is going to be about where you're heading in life. Um, and I think it's important that we think about that. You know, where is our, where is our life heading? Uh, what, are, what is our life, what are we doing now that's going to add value to our life down the road? You know, what are, what are we doing in our life now that we're gonna, it's going to lead to a place that we want to be, right? You want to make sure that what you're doing now is going to produce the right result in the end. 
That way when you get to the end and you find out the result, you're not frustrated or upset because really you made the decisions in your heart that led you there, right? And you know, the good thing is no matter how far down the wrong path you go, um, I believe that the grace of God is enough to redeem anything and everything. Praise God. But it's, I think it's better to get on the right path uh, sooner rather than later. Praise God. So the Lord is telling us that our heart determines the course, uh, the path of our life. And I was, I was wanting to compare it to something here. I thought it was pretty interesting about um, uh, when it comes to different objects, you know, f just kind of floating around or flying around in space. And what causes those objects to take the path that they take in space? And, um, or, or, you know, what, why is their trajectory the way that it is? And so let me, let me just first define this word traje uh, trajectory. Having a hard time saying that. It's uh, the path followed by a projectile flying or an, or an object moving under the action of given forces. So there are forces that are causing this certain object in, in space, the enormity of space. There are forces that are causing this, uh, you know, every object in space to move in a certain path. And I believe it's that way for us here on Earth as humans. Um, I'm not talking physically. I'm talking about your, your life, your spiritual life, where you're headed. And we need to ask ourselves, what is the uh, path of our life? What is the trajectory of our life you know if we know what forces are influencing us to cause us to go on a certain path in life we can make adjustments to make sure that we're on the right path we're on the right uh trajectory and so in in space what determines the trajectory of or or path of an object is is obviously gravity right? Um, gravity determines its, its path. It pulls objects in and there's different uh, gravitational forces that are going on in space as a result of the, the planets and the, and the sun. And um, Gravity greatly depends on the mass of an object. So the bigger the mass, obviously the bigger uh, gravitational pull it's going to have. So, you know, um, Jupiter, for example, it's a really big planet, and so Jupiter is going to have a much stronger gravitational pull uh, than Earth is going to have, for example, because Jupiter is much larger than Earth. And so, again, the gravity is a force, and it's causing uh, these objects to move in a certain path, in a certain way. And, you know, the, the closer these objects get to uh, Jupiter, or any any um, any any you know planet that has that that has a gravitational pull, it's that's going to affect its path and its trajectory. So we need to ask ourselves: What are we allowing? What forces are we allowing in our life to uh, create our path? And it goes back to Proverbs four twenty three, where it says, "Guard your heart, because your heart determines the course of our life." And so we need to ask ourselves: What forces am I allowing? to affect my heart? What forces am I allowing to push and to pull and to tug on my heart? That's what I need to ask because whatever forces I'm allowing, and we do allow it, you know, there's, there's really no excuse in life. We don't control everything that happens to us, but there's really no excuse because, you know, we have control of our heart. We don't always have control of what happens to us, but we have control of our heart and what we're going to allow to affect us because what affects us is our, our different forces that are pulling on us and we make a decision you know what are we going to allow to be a bigger force in our life um, again the bigger mass an object has the 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 more of a you know of a gravitational pull it'll have and um, so we need to ask ourselves, you know, what are we allowing to weigh heavy on our hearts? What forces are we uh, allowing to be a big influence in our life? You know, are we allowing certain people or certain groups or, or clubs to have a, um, 
a lot of influence on our, on our heart. What are we allowing to force us in a certain direction? And my whole thing is, this may seem really simple, <laughs> maybe too simple, but it's, um, I think we need to ask ourselves this, you know, are we allowing the word to weigh heavy on our hearts? In other words, are we allowing the word to be that, that big force that is uh, sending our lives on the right path? See, we can allow, you know, we can, we can allow so many different people, godly or ungodly, to be a major influence in our life. Um, but just realize that whatever you're allowing to affect your heart and whatever you're allowing to um, have influence in your, in your life, in your heart, is, is that's the way that you're going to go. That's the way you're going to go. You know, life, life is not... Um, it's not difficult. It's not confusing. I know it can be, and I know there's people out there who feel like it is, but when you go to God's word, like God's word explains everything. And he clearly says here that the path of your life, the course of your life is a result of your heart. So you have no one to blame but yourself if your life is not on a path that you want it to be on. And I know that may seem harsh, and believe me, I'm talking to myself as well, but it's true. If you're not happy with the course of your life, the Bible says that your heart is what determines that course. So instead of blaming life or blaming God or blaming family or friends or people or blaming the devil, why don't we take a look at ourselves and say, hmm, maybe I'm allowing bad forces, evil forces to have too much of an influence on my heart. Maybe we're maybe we're putting too much weight on the wrong things in life. Maybe we're our priorities are out of whack. Maybe we're um, allowing too many bad things to have a say. You know, we're giving them a voice in our life. And uh, and the Lord is calling us to mute those bad voices and to stop allowing these bad forces to have an influence on our in our heart and and therefore determine the the course the path of our life so again i know it may sound too simple but you know we need to put more weight on god's word we need to allow his word to have more force in our life more pull in our life um are we allowing god's word to change us are, are we allowing his word to shape and to mold our, our thinking or are we just being influenced and and uh conformed to the world and allowing the world to tell us how things should be or how things, how things are. You know, we need to give the word more weight in our life. Um, man, praise God. <clears throat> the truth about it is, again, going back to just the, the trajectory, the, the, the path of a, an object in space. Um, the closer to a planet, uh, the stronger the gravitational pull will be on that certain object, right? So... Um, so obviously we're experiencing Earth's full gravitational force because we are on Earth. We are literally on it. But the further we get away from Earth, the less of an impact the, the gravity of Earth has on us, which um, is why, you know, the sun is far away. I don't even know how far away the sun is. But, you know, the sun is huge and it has a strong gravitational force. But the reason the Earth is not sucked into the sun is because... Um, God created the, the, the planets and the, the world and the earth and the sun perfectly and put them just far enough apart to where the earth would not be sucked into the sun and, and therefore burned up and destroyed, right? God is smart. He, he knows what he's doing. And so the, the closer you are to the planet, the stronger its gravitational pull. The further away from a planet that we are, um, the less, uh, the, the, the weaker its gravitational pull will be. And my point in saying that is, the closer we're, we're allowing ourselves to get too close to evil things. We're allowing ourselves to get too close to the world. And when you do that, it's, 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 you're contradicting yourself because there's, there's Christians who are, they're trying to live for God or they, let me say, let me put it this way. They're not trying. They want to live for God. Let's just put it that way. They want to live for God, but they also are, they're, they're being close to the world. They're getting too close to the world. And so 
they consider life a great struggle and they consider life really hard because they want to serve God, um, but they always find themselves being close to the world. And let me say this, that, you know, if you're, it's, it's like in James when it says, you're just talking about your words and, 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 and your mouth and how it talks about, you know, you can't have both salt water and fresh water in the same stream. It's going to be either one or the other. And that's really how it is with God. We can't have one foot in the world and one foot in God's kingdom. Like it's one or the other. Um, either God's kingdom is going to win in your life or the world's kingdom is going to live in your life. And it's dependent upon what you're closer to or who you're closer to. If you're closer to the world, the world is going to pull you in. Because, the, again, the closer you are to something, the stronger its gravitational pull will be on your life. And if you're wanting to serve God, that's great. And, and live for God, that's great. But if you're always getting too close to the world, it doesn't matter what you want. The world is going to pull you in. The world is going to suck you in. Because you're not going to be able to withstand its, its gravitational pull. And, and the opposite is true as well. That the closer that, <coughs> that you place yourself to God, and by, by that I mean um, you know, going, to, going to church, uh, surrounding yourself with godly friends, Let's just start there. Going to church, a good church, Bible-believing church, and, um, and surrounding yourself with, with good friends, godly people. All right? Well, chances are you're, you're going to end up in, well, I mean, you are. You're, you're going to end up in God's kingdom. Why? Because you're positioning yourself to be pulled into God's kingdom. We need to understand that there is a spiritual gravitational uh, force going on in the world or forces going on in the world and satan is trying to suck you into the world and trying to suck you into the ways of the world and if you don't position yourself close to to the lord to his kingdom the world is going to suck you in you know and we just we have to realize that we can't be oblivious and ignorant to uh satan's devices is what the bible says don't be ignorant be sober know what is going on and there are evil forces out there that are pulling and tugging at your heart. And if you don't stay close to Jesus and continually make him your refuge, the world will suck you in. The evil forces will get you. And I'm not saying that to scare you because, again, your life is what you want it to be. You can place yourself closer to the world and be sucked in the world. Or you can make Jesus your refuge and be sucked into his kingdom. Amen? So... It's all a matter of, of what we want. What, what forces are we allowing to influence our heart? And um, I just pray that you really you know, walk away with this and, and just think about it. Your life, what are you allowing to influence your life? What forces are you allowing to pull and to tug on your heart? You, we've got to be careful. We've got to be wise. We've got to be smart. Because you, know, you can't just... Let anybody influence you and expect to live godly. You just, you just can't. And we're deceiving ourselves if we think that. If we think that we can just allow anybody to influence us and you know, our, we can make our heart what we want it to be. No. Your heart, the way that you believe, is, is shaped and molded by who you're allowing to influence you and the forces you're allowing to pull on you. So... My whole thing is separate yourself from the world. And, and the way that you separate yourself from the world is it, is it just allowing God's word to influence you more than anything else. And, and when you allow God's word to influence you more than anything else, you'll realize, man, you know, I need to be at church, not just for religious duty. I need to be at church to be with other believers, like-minded believers, uh, to be encouraged, to be blessed with the word, and um, you know, just to be around godly people. Who are going in the same direction that I am. Praise God. So guard your heart. It determines the course of your life. Amen. Um, I pray that blessed you. Um, go ahead and give us a like and a share. If you enjoyed it and you believe it will bless others. Uh, with that being said. We love you. God bless you. And I'll talk to you soon.